Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! My husband and I travel a lot for work and we always make sure to book seats together at the back of the plane. And yeah, it's just our preference. The day started early, way too early and we had to wake up at 3 a.m. to drive to the airport, and let me tell you, I was not in the best mood. Lack of sleep does that to you, you know? Anyway, we finally boarded the plane, and as we made our way down the aisle, I spotted something that made me want to roll my eyes so hard that it'd fall out of my head. There in our seats sat a woman and her son. The kid looked about 11 or 12, and both of them were completely absorbed in their phones. I took a deep breath and decided to handle this as politely as possible. Excuse me, but I believe you're in our seats. The woman looked up, flashing me a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Oh, we weren't seated together, so the flight attendant told us we could sit here. Now, I knew that was a load of nonsense. Flight attendants do not just randomly assign seats, especially not ones that other passengers have paid for. But I kept my cool. I'm sorry, but we specifically paid for these seats. We'd like to sit here, please. Her smile did not falter, but I could see a hint of annoyance in her eyes. Well, there are other empty seats behind you. Would you mind sitting in one of those? We're already settled and comfortable. Does it really matter? I couldn't believe the audacity. Of course it mattered. We paid for those specific seats. Yes, it does matter. The plane is still boarding, so those seats might be reserved. It really misses was a system of people sit in random seats. I could see her smile starting to crack. She was clearly not used to people standing up to her. If there aren't seats available after the plane finishes boarding, we will move then. Now, I'm not usually confrontational. In fact, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, but something in me snapped. Maybe it was a lack of sleep, or maybe I was just tired of entitled people thinking they could walk all over others. Either way, I decided that that's it. I'm sorry, but I just want to sit down. I don't want to stand in the aisle blocking people while we wait to see if there might be empty seats. I paid for our seats and I'd like to sit in them. I paused for a moment then decided to go for broke. With a sweet smile, I added, Besides, I'd like the police to be able to Identify our bodies by seat number in case a plane crashes and our families want to bury our remains. The kid's head shot off from his phone so fast, I thought he might get whiplash. He looked between me and his mom with wide eyes. It was absolutely priceless. The woman's face was a picture of shock and she just sat there mouth slightly open for what felt like an eternity but was probably only about 5 seconds. Then, was that a word? She started gathering her things and nudged her son to move. I kept that sweet smile plastered on my face as I thanked her and settled into my rightful seat. My husband returned with a flight attendant just as a woman and her son were shuffling away. Everything's fine now. They've moved. I quickly filled my husband in on what had happened. We both had a good laugh about it. I'm pretty sure the woman could hear us, which only made it better. <laughs> I didn't look back, but I swear I could feel her staring daggers at the back of my head for the entire flight. Luckily, it was only a three-hour flight, so I didn't have to awkwardly squeeze past her to use a bathroom. Small mercies, right? You know, it's funny. I've read so many stories about entitled people trying to steal seats on planes, but I never thought it would happen to me. I guess with airlines making it almost a requirement to pay for seats if you want to sit with your travel partner, more and more people are trying their luck. I have to admit, part of me was kind of excited when it happened. It was like being in one of those Reddit stories I love to read. But let me tell you, dealing with entitled people in real life is a whole different ball game. The woman's audacity still amazes me. I mean, who just sits in someone else's assigned seat and then has a nerve to ask them to sit somewhere else? And that lie about the flight attendant telling them to sit there? You know what's funny? Part of me almost wishes she had refused to move. Just to see what would happen. Would the flight attendants have gotten involved? Would she have been escorted off the plane? 
it might have made for an even better story. But I'm glad it didn't come to that. As satisfying as it might have been to see her get her comeuppance, it would have delayed the flight for everyone else. And really, that's the heart of the issue, isn't it? Entitled people do not just inconvenience one person, their actions affect everyone around them. My life used to be so different. I was a teacher, loved my job, and adored my students. Every day was an adventure for me. But everything changed when I found that lumber. It started as just another day I was getting ready for work, crushing through my morning routine. As I was showering, my hand brushed against something unfamiliar. My heart stopped. I knew deep down what it might be, but I tried to convince myself it was nothing. I couldn't ignore it though. So the next day I went to see a doctor. The words breast cancer hit me like a truck. My world crumbled. How could this happen to me? I was only in my early 40s, healthy, active, so it didn't really make sense. The following weeks were a blur of tests, consultations, and difficult decisions. I had to leave my job, my students, and it broke my heart, but I needed to focus on my health. Living in a developing country, our healthcare system isn't the best, but I was fortunate to find a decent oncology clinic. My world crumbled again. Regular visits for chemotherapy became my new normal. It was tough, I won't lie. The side effects were brutal. I lost my hair, felt constantly nauseous. I was so tired all the time. But I found strengths in unexpected places. The other patients at the clinic became like family. We supported each other through the hard days, celebrated the small victories. The medical staff, despite being overworked and underpaid, always had a kind word or a gentle touch. It wasn't ideal, but we made the best of it. One day, I was sitting in the chemotherapy room, hooked up to the IV. The familiar beeping of the machines and hushed conversations filled the air. I was chatting with the elderly man next to me about our favorite TV shows when suddenly the door burst open. A woman stormed in. She looked around wildly, then marched up to the nurse's station. I demand to see a doctor right now. Ma'am, please lower your voice. This is a treatment area. How can I help you? I've been waiting for hours. My toe hurts. And I need someone to look at it immediately. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. A toe? In the oncology ward? The nurse tells her, I'm sorry, but this is a chemotherapy room for oncology patients. If you need to see a doctor for your toe, you'll need to go to the general outpatient department. I don't care. I've been waiting too long already. Someone needs to see me now. The noise was getting louder. I could see other patients starting to look uncomfortable. The elderly man next to me was trying to cover his ears with his frail hands. Just then, the oncologist walked in. She took in the scene and approached the angry woman. Hello? What seems to be the problem? Finally, a doctor! My toe has been hurting for days and no one will help me. I understand you're in pain, but this is a specialized ward for cancer patients. We're not equipped to handle general medical issues here. I can direct you to the right department. No, I am not going anywhere else. You're a doctor, aren't you? Look at my toe. The woman actually sat down and started taking off her shoe. I couldn't believe it. Looking around, I saw the distress on the faces of my fellow patients. Some were too weak to even lift their heads, but their eyes showed their discomfort. Then I felt the need to say something. Ah, uh, excuse me? My voice was weak from the treatment, but I managed to get her attention. I don't think you understand where you are. Everyone in this room is fighting for their lives. We're here for chemotherapy, which makes us feel horrible. We need peace and quiet. Your toe can wait. Please, go to the right department. Mind your own business. You don't look that sick to me. That stung. She had no idea what I was going through. What any of us were going through. Another patient spoke up. An older woman who become like a mother to me. Young lady. Have some respect. We're all suffering here. If you can't walk and shout like that, you can go to the proper department. How dare you? Do you know who I am? I'll have you all fired. Then the doctor tells her, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. You're disturbing our patients. I am not going anywhere until someone looks at my toe. She was screaming now. The doctor looked at the nurse and nodded. The nurse left the room quickly. This is your last warning. 
Leave now or I'll be forced to call security. Go ahead, call them. I'll sue this whole hospital. A few minutes later, two burly security guards entered the room. Ma'am, you need to come with us. Don't touch me, I have rights. She tried to run, but in her anger, she forgot and she'd taken off her shoe. She tripped and fell face first onto the floor. The guards didn't waste any time. They picked her up, none too gently, and started dragging her out of the department. Let me go! I'll sue you all! You haven't heard the last of me! Her shouts faded as they took her away. We all sat in stunned silence for a moment. The doctor says, I am so sorry about that, everyone. Are you all okay? There were murmurs of assent. A doctor went around checking on each patient individually. And when she got to me, she squeezed my hand. Thank you for speaking up. You shouldn't have had to do that. Well, I couldn't just sit there and let her disrupt everything. We all have enough to deal with. You're right. I'll speak with the hospital administration about improving our security measures. This shouldn't happen again. The rest of the session was quieter than usual. We were all processing what had happened, and as I was leaving, the nurse stopped me. Just so you know, the police came. They surely don't take kindly to people causing trouble in hospitals. Last I saw, they were dragging that woman out to the police car. She was still yelling about her toe. The next time I came for treatment, things had changed. There was a security guard stationed outside the oncology ward. The receptionist told me they'd implemented new protocols to screen non-patients before they could enter treatment areas. Life went on. Chemo was still hard, but I kept fighting. The support of my family, fellow patients, and the medical staff made all the difference. But whenever things got tough, we'd remind each other, at least it's not as bad as the old lady. Alright, so this is a story of how my friends and I dealt with a bunch of jerks at a restaurant. It was my buddy Winston's birthday, and we planned to take him out to his favorite place to eat. There were eight of us, all excited to celebrate and have a good time. When we got to the restaurant, they sat us near this smaller table full of guys who looked like they'd just stepped out of a frat house catalog. You know the type, backward caps, muscle shirts, the whole nine yards. At first, we didn't think much of it, but it only took about five minutes for us to realize these guys were going to be a problem. They were being super loud and rude, giving their server a hard time over every little thing. It was getting annoying fast. Then our server came over, and wouldn't you know it, she was the same girl dealing with the jerks at the other table. She looked pretty frazzled when she got to us. I'm so sorry for the wait. She said that. Standing stressed. I've got a lot on my plate right now. We all nodded and told her not to worry about it. We understood she was dealing with a tough situation. She took our drink orders and gave us some more time to look at the menu. A few minutes later, we heard yelling coming from the other table. From what we could make out, one of the guys wanted to order an alcoholic drink but didn't have his ID with him. The poor server was doing her best to stay calm and handle the situation. But this guy wasn't making it easy. He kept waving his phone around and we heard the server trying to explain, I'm sorry but I cannot accept a screenshot. Then one of his buddies decided to play hero. I'll buy the drink for him, he announced. Like he'd just solved world hunger or something. The server, bless her heart, tried to explain why that wouldn't work. I'm sorry but I can't do that. It's illegal and I could get in big trouble. Well that set the whole table off. They were all yelling and carrying on like a bunch of toddlers who'd been told they couldn't have ice cream for dinner. Finally, the server said she'd get her manager and practically ran away from the table. I swear, I saw tears in her eyes as she left. Winston, our birthday boy, was getting pretty worked up. I'm gonna say something to those jerks. He growled, starting to stand up. Luckily, his girlfriend grabbed his arm and pulled him back down. And that's when our friend DJ got this mischievous look on his face. I have a better idea, he said with a smirk. I have to fart. I couldn't help but grin. I knew exactly where he was going with this. I say, so do I. He asks, are we going to crop dust this table? I answer, I think we are. Now, the way the restaurant was set up, you had to walk past the jerk's table to get to the bathroom. You could go either to the... You could go either to the left or the right of it. 
which was perfect for our plan. DJ stood up first and started making his way to the bathroom. He disappeared around the corner and a few seconds later, we saw the effects hit. At first, the guys at the other table thought it was hilarious. They were pointing at one guy in particular, blaming him for the smell. He didn't think it was so funny though and was getting pretty mad at his friends. That was my cue. I got up and headed to the bathroom passing on the opposite side of the table from where DJ had gone. When I rounded the corner, there was DJ grinning like he just won a lottery. We stood there and listened as true chaos began to unfold. The second crop dusting wasn't as funny to them as the first one. They were yelling and pointing fingers at each other, trying to figure out who the culprit was. Just then, the manager finally showed up. We couldn't see his face, but we could hear everything. Gentlemen, I'm going to have to ask you to keep it down. If you can't calm yourselves, I'm afraid you'll have to leave. The guys at the table weren't happy about that at all. They started complaining about their server, probably trying to deflect blame for their own bad behavior. The manager was quiet for a good minute before he started talking again. He had to explain the law about serving alcohol, adding that because of what the second guy had said about buying a drink for his friend. The whole table couldn't be served any alcohol at all. They couldn't confirm if everyone at the table was over 21. So, it was a no-go. Man, were they pissed about that. But they still decided to stay. Probably because they were too embarrassed to leave at that point. The manager assigned them a new server. This big buff guy with a face that practically screamed, Try me, I dare you. For the rest of the night, those guys sat there with their heads down, barely making a beep. It was beautiful. DJ and I made our way back to our table, trying our best not to burst out laughing. When we sat down, our friends looked at us expectantly. Winston asks, What did you guys do? Let's just say we cleared the air. Yeah, those guys won't be bothering anyone else tonight. Lisa asks, You didn't get into a fight or anything, did you? Nah, nothing like that. We just used our natural talents. Winston's girlfriend caught on first and started giggling. You didn't, she said, trying to keep her voice down. I just shrugged and gave her a wink. Soon the whole table was in on a joke and we were all trying not to laugh too loudly. Our server came back a few minutes later looking much more relaxed. She says, I'm so sorry about all of that. Is everyone ready to order? Winston tells her, no worries at all. We're just glad things have calmed down. We all placed our orders, making sure to be extra nice to her. As she was about to leave, DJ spoke up. Hey. We just wanted to say we really appreciate how you handled that situation earlier. You did a great job. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. The rest of the night went smoothly. We had a great time celebrating Winston's birthday and the food was amazing. Every now and then we'd look over at the other table and see those guys still sitting there looking miserable and embarrassed. As we were leaving, we made sure to stop by the manager's station. I say... We just wanted to let you know that our server was fantastic tonight, especially considering what she had to deal with earlier. He says, I really appreciate you saying that. I'll make sure she knows it. The manager thanked us again and we headed out, feeling pretty good about how things had turned out. On the way to our cars, Winston stopped and turned to DJ and me. I don't know exactly what you two did, but thanks. You guys made sure my birthday didn't get ruined by those jerks. Hey, what are friends for? Yeah, sometimes you just have to fight fire with, well, you know. We all cracked up at that piling into our cars and heading home. It wasn't the first day celebration we'd originally planned, but it turned out to be one we'd never forget. And hey, if those guys learned a lesson about how to behave in public, well, that was just a bonus. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.